A little of this cadmium yellow goes a long way. Keeping a light hand so this coffee berry doesn't look funny. Do you think the bats are like civet cats if they are eating coffee berries? Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. I'm so excited to have a new intro screen. Let me know what you thought of it. I hope the volume wasn't too bad. I tried to make sure it was reasonable. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you can join in and color along with me. Especially since today I'm starting a new project in Fragile Worlds. For the summer, I am scaling back the number of videos due to a lack of time. I hope to be back at it full time in the fall, but it will depend on many things. So for now, videos will now be coming out Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I chose the Philippine Naked Backed Fruit Bat. I liked the leaves and berries and thought this might be a nice page to color up and even try to work up a bokeh background on. I also changed how I am adding in the colors. I tried to not have them anywhere they would be covered by subtitles or cards or even the bottom scroll bar. I'll still have a full palette on Patreon for download if that worked better for you. I do start with the background, but I will not be completing the background today. I decided to rough out some leaves and branches in the background as a starting point and begin filling in the initial layers of the background. I might use OMS on this to help get the soft blurry effect, but if I can get the same effect without, I might just skip it. I do have the speed set faster for the background, as it does take so much longer to do. Would it make more sense to save all the background clips for one big background video instead of breaking it up? Let me know what you would prefer. This time, I'm going to space out the background a little. I started the background with the grass green and sketching in a branch and some rough leaves. There will be no details in this background. Hopefully, it will just be a lot of blurry green shapes. Once I have a few roughed in shapes, I go through with the grass green and fill in some of the areas. I'm going light and a little scribbly here, and my pencil is getting very dull. Once I've gone through and roughed in some shapes with the grass green, I want to now go in and rough in more shapes with the permanent green. The leaves will be receiving different amounts of light, so it is fine to have different colors in the background. This will also give me something to work off of when I'm adding in other colors. If you watched my background video, I explained that having a background in place can make it a little easier to figure out how dark to make the main subject. I'll add that video in the cards in case you missed it. So basically, I want to add in a layer over the background so I can have an idea of how the rest of my colors work. I go through and add in the permanent green in spots, touch up the grass green, as well as go through and add in some yellow lemon up near the top for an even lighter leaf. At the beginning, I am using a reference photo for what the berries, bat, and some of the background looks like, but for the background, I will be going through and just adding in organic random shapes as I go through. I come in with the pine green to darken up the permanent green some as well. I do go through and add a few layers to each area, more grass green on the sections to tone down the yellow lemon as well as lighten up the permanent green a little. I am not going for a ton of layers right now. I plan on building up the background as I work up the foreground in a step-by-step -step way. That way everything comes together at the same time. That is the plan anyways. Now that I feel like I have most of the actual shapes in place, I go back in with the permanent green and add in a layer over the rest of the paper except for one place where I'm going to have a branch. That will cover today's background exploration. The Philippine Naked Backed Fruit Bat is part of the Mega Bat family which is also known as flying foxes. Most of them are fruit eating bats. The Philippine Fruit Bat is facing difficulties due to habitat loss, cave disturbances through guano harvesting, and pressure due to hunting. They used to have a larger habitat spread, but one of the islands they are endemic to now only contains 4% of the forest it used to contain, and there is very little habitat for them to live in. Protections have been put in place, and trees are being planted to replace lost forest near their cave roosts. 
If you've made it this far and have enjoyed coloring with me, just watching, or learning about the Philippine fruit bat, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a like and subscribe to stay informed of when I post more videos. It really helps me out. For the summer, I am posting three times a week, and subscribing is the best way to stay in the loop and follow along with the color alongs. I'm now moving on to the berries, which I wasn't sure what they were at first, but I had an idea of what they might be. But as mentioned above, I am working off a reference photo that has the berries, so I don't need to worry about them. It did turn out to be coffee berries, so searching for pictures of coffee berries gets more images of them at different stages of ripeness. So today, I am just working from one reference that had mostly ripe berries. Tomorrow, I will use another reference that will feature berries more on the green end. For the first set of berries, I am coming in with a base layer of the scarlet and adding in a light layer over the entire berry. I chose three berries with the end goal of having them be at the red stage, not the darker purple-black stage that some of the other berries in the photo appear to be. I can now come in with the dark sepia and begin roughing in my shadows. I am getting most of my cues from the line art on where to place most of my shadows, but I am also looking at the reference image as it does show where some of the deepest shadows are better than the line art. I go through and add shadows to all of the berries in one big push. It is no easier to do it all now versus as I work up each group of berries, but if I go through in one pass now, I can at least try to make sure the shadows are uniform in my pressure, as well as all following the same approximate rule of where the light source is coming from. There are areas where I am adding in more layers of sepia, but I know that I will have to come back and darken the shadows again. This is just a given. I have not found that there is a one layer and done when working in a more realistic fashion. The more layers, the better the build-up. Although I have been working up more than one berry at a time up to this point, I am now going to focus down onto one berry and figure out how to get the color and shading where I feel it is right before moving on to more berries. I am coming in with a deep red and putting it in where the shadows are the darkest and blending it out toward the lighter areas. I add in a layer of the scarlet over the shadowed areas as well as blending out even more towards the highlight area. I am trying to be careful to maintain that really light highlight for now. It will need more layers there, but I don't want to make it too dark. I'm adding in orange, mostly to the middle part of the berry, then I come in with the yellow and add that mostly to the top and highlight area. This is really bright yellow, and I have found that pressing even just a little too hard really adds a lot more yellow than I want. So a little of this cadmium yellow goes a long way. I feel at this point the berry looks fine, but I really won't know if it needs more until I get the rest of the berries finished. I know I will have to come back in to touch up the shadows, but whether I need to add more color or not, I will only be able to tell once I have all of them finished. I'll then be able to see if there are thin spots or if one berry looks too light compared to the others. I am now going to move on to the next berry. I again come in with the darker red over the areas where I put the sepia, blending the color out further. I blend out even further with the scarlet, then I bring in the yellow and add it over the entire berry this time. I then tone down the yellow with orange, then bring the dark red back in to darken up the shadows again since the yellow lightened up the berry a little, and I touch up the first berry a little as well. On to the next berry. I start with the dark red, keeping it to the areas with the sepia, then blending the edges outwards. I try adding in the yellow next to see what happens when I switch the order around a little. I thought about making this berry a little more on the red side and not quite as dark as the others. I use the yellow over the whole berry, then I use the orange, but leave the highlights alone for now. I bring back in the dark red for touching up, 
It looks a little more red. Might still need touching up though. Time to move on to the next berry. I wanted to make the next set of berries even darker. More of a dark purple red than the dark red I just did. The berries can be an even brighter red as well as some with green and pink. I come in with the dark red, keeping it to the shadows before blending it out around the edges. Now I'm coming in with the red violet to really make the berry dark, mostly keeping it to the shadows as well as very little blending out. I bring in the walnut brown to darken up the shadows even more. I add in the yellow to the highlight areas, followed by more dark red to tone down the highlights, which are really too bright right now. I bring in the orange over the whole berry except the highlights. I don't think this is needed, but I wanted to make sure the berries had the same colors in them, even if this one is darker. I bring in the sepia to touch up the shadows again, then I bring in the black as the sepia just didn't go dark enough for me. I add in some black and that does it. On to the next berry, which I will try to make as dark as this one. I'm starting with the dark red as the base layer. I then bring in the red violet to darken up the shadows just like the other berries. I do keep the red violet to the areas where I used the sepia with just a little bit blended out past the sepia. I darken up the shadows with more layers of sepia. I am now coming in with the walnut brown to darken up most of the berry, but preserving the highlights and some of the blended areas. I use the yellow mostly for the highlights, but I also blend it down into the darker areas too. The orange is used over the entire berry. It adds more layers and makes the color richer. Finally, I touch up the color with the dark red again, followed by the black for the darkest areas, then more dark red. I am now going to just work up the last three berries together since I feel like I have the colors the way I like them. I come in with the dark red as a base layer over the remaining three berries, keeping my pressure light. These three I am going to make very dark. After the base layer, I bring in the red violet and darken up the shadowed parts of the berries even more. I blend it up into the highlight area a little bit, but not too far, just enough to prevent a harsh line. I layer in more dark red, smoothing out the transition between shadow and light. With the walnut brown, I want to make the whole berry a little darker. I put in a light layer over most of the berry, avoiding the brightest highlights for now. I darken up the shadows even more with more sepia, erasing any overcoloring as I go.
I bring in the orange for the entire berry followed by the yellow over the whole berry. Back to the dark red. I give most of the berry a layer of dark red while leaving the highlight alone. With the black, I darken up the shadows where they would be the darkest. Then I bring in the red, violet, orange, yellow, and red again to touch everything up for more layers and refining. These berries are looking pretty good right now, but the berry in the bat's mouth now looks a little washed out. So I come back in with the red and touch it up. I added more yellow, then I go and touch up the other berries again with a bit more black. Onto a new bunch of berries. I come in with the sepia and add in a shadow to all of the berries. I follow the line art as best I can since it is easier that way. I come in with the scarlet and pick three berries to start working on. These three will be the lighter of the berries. The base layer goes over the whole berry and will eventually act as part of the highlight. I come in with the deep red and darken up the shadows and blend the shadows better into the highlight area.
I come in with a light layer of orange over the whole berry, followed by the yellow over the whole berry. I don't press very hard with these layers as they are very bright colors and I want a red berry, not a yellow or orange berry. I bring in more dark red for the shadowed part of the berries. I'm leaving the highlight alone for these dark layers, mostly only touching it with light colors or light layers. I use the orange and the yellow to blend more color into the highlight area as well as filling in the paper even more for the rest of the berry. I then go back and forth with the dark red and sepia to get the shadows pretty dark. I want the red on top to make sure it is the first color seen. For the rest of the berries in this clump, I'm going to work them up in the darker shade. So I come in with the dark red for my base layer over all of the berries, and once I have that in place, I will come in with the red violet and darken up the shadowed areas for each berry. I come back in with the dark red to add another layer over the shadowed side of the berry and blend it into the highlight area.
I will also bring in more red violet for the same reason, to darken up the shadowed area of the berry. I come in with the scarlet mostly over the highlight area to brighten up the color. I do the same thing with the orange and the yellow. I bring them in and mostly use them over the highlight area and blend it into the edge of the shadowed area. On the darker berries, the shadows will be really dark, so adding in orange or yellow into the shadows just won't make a difference. I'm going to work on the shadows, coming in with the red-violet, more dark red, and sepia to get them dark. I darken up the whole berry in a uniform layer of walnut brown, with a bit more focus on the shadows. At this point, the berries are looking pretty good. I go through with several of the darker colors to touch up the shadows and everything before coming in with the black and really getting the shadows dark. I'll be stopping with this clump of berries, but there are still plenty of berries to go. Thanks for joining me for the Philippine Naked Backed Fruit Bat. Let me know below or on social media if you colored along. I'd love to know how you did. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, MeWe, and Patreon. Patreon has a short write-up, my palettes, and a list of the timestamps, and I've made them available for everyone. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or reach out to me on social media. I put in a list of chapter breaks in the show notes, as well as a list of equipment I like to use. If you use any of my affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you a thing. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe to help that happen. Until next time, happy coloring.